This is a Hot Pie Media Original. What's up? Welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards. Super stoked about today's show. What's new? I know. Uh, Before we get to Coot Blackson and the show, which is so, so good, uh, I want to just say like, rate, review, subscribe, all those kind of good things. They completely matter in this game called podcasting. And I am super, super grateful with every single one. So also a little bit of business up top. If you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, we're doing One Minute Mondays as well now, which are just a little blurb at the top of every week to help us stay motivated. A little quote that I love. And I got to tell you, I'm going to be sharing quotes from Coot Blackson's book, The Magic of Surrender in those as well. He's got so many good quotes in there that I listened to the book, but I would have to pause it and like take notes and write them down because they're just amazing. And he has a ton of them today too. You're going to love it. Let's get to the show. I'm excited to tell you about a great clothing brand made right here in the USA that speaks to how we dress now. And that's good life clothing because how we dress now means we want to be comfortable (laughs) and look good, right? It's so simple. What took us so long? Well, Good Life Clothing, as I mentioned, is American made from the finest, highest quality materials and their core collection of premium essentials keeps you feeling great and looking great too. I know I wear it. I have it in my closet as we speak. And they just opened a store right here in Austin, Texas in the Domain North side. So you can go visit them IRL or you can order online at goodlifeclothing.com because the discount code that we have exclusively for listeners of the Amy Edwards show is good in real life at a brick and mortar store, or it's good on their website, goodlifeclothing.com. Just enter code Amy20 and you'll get 20% off your entire order, goodlifeclothing.com. Elevate your game with good life. Hello, here we are again, and I could not be happier. Super stoked about today's guest, Coot Blackson. And he's just, he's a master of surrender and just wrote a book on it. And I am discovering more and more. That's what it's all about. And he has some badass stuff to share. So, so excited to get to that. Um, First, I don't know, let's chat a little bit. How are you? What's going on? Are you running around? Are you slowing down? Are you taking a breath? Are you recalibrating? Mm, I just lit a little Palo Santo and that just, I use this just to cue me to slow down. If you watch my meditations on Instagram, that's always like my thing. Like I light something just to, just to give myself like, it's like a mnemonic device to help me step more present into my breath and the moment and just living and breathing and (laughs) being in the now which is easy to lose sight of. So today I want to talk a little bit about respect and competition. And because I feel like, well, I do it, first of all. (laughs) Let's go ahead and just get that on out there. Y'all know I'm here to just be completely open and transparent about everything. And I notice that I can get out of my practices. And Coot talks about this today. He talks about exactly what I was thinking about talking about. He talks about when life shows us something and can we celebrate what we're seeing? Can we celebrate that other person? Can we celebrate the success that they're having when our instinct creeps up and goes, well, I want that. What the fuck? You know, why am I not getting it? And so I was feeling a little of that just the other day as I do every now and then, you know, and really I should just put down the social media and get to work. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes my mind starts to get away from me and I can feel that creep up. So I paid attention to it. I watched this movie the other day called Good on Paper, Eliza Schlesinger. And it's, it was pretty funny. And there's another character in there. That's like an actress that started out in the, in the, movie. The actress and Eliza's character started out at the same time in LA. And then one girl's career is totally blown up. The other girl's career is just blown up. She's just everywhere. And the main character, Eliza's character hasn't, she still sees herself as like struggling and not 
getting anything in these auditions and just she's a comic, but she's trying to act too. And so anyway, there's this huge billboard that she wants to get someday. And uh, of course, the other character's face is on the billboard. And the other character is the other actress, the one that's real successful. She's um, really sweet and kind and spunky and engaging with others. And Eliza just hates her. Her character just hates her. And she's like, that fucking bitch, basically. And I mean, so many times we felt like that. We're like, <clears throat> it feels like a zero sum game. Like their success is impeding on mine. Like, and why am I not getting it? And so when we do that, what is our show up game looking like? <clears throat> That's what I wanted to hone in on. When we show up like that, our show up game is pretty shitty, pretty negative you're being shown something and you're falling into this negative space. And I have noticed that so many times it's my own ego. It's me wanting respect for what I do, right? Let's talk about podcasting, you know, like I just, I just had this happen. And this was like, well, I'm going to talk about this because I recognized it and I turned it around real fast, but it's a practice and that's okay. These are times when you can turn it around. You can start to notice, you can start to pay attention, you can turn it around. So I just noticed today and this girl was like talking about, you know, all her downloads and like thanking people and she's putting out good, positive content, totally aligned with shit I believe, totally aligned with stuff that we're working on. I should be celebrating that. That's good stuff to put out in the world. And not that I'm not going to celebrate the stuff that I don't necessarily resonate with, but you know, I should definitely be celebrating this and her success, right? But instead I had a little flare. I had like an ego flare. And it was like, oh, you know, she's never asked me to be on her podcast. And then I thought, well, I haven't asked her to be on mine either. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, she's really young. You know, what, what am I going to learn? Oh, that's so bad, right? So disrespectful. And here I am wanting, some, wanting her or anyone. I want to be respected, right? You want to be respected. I know you do. I think that's like a basic thing, right? We want to be respected. So in our show up game, are we respecting that person? Was Eliza and good on paper? Was she respecting the hard work that that chick put in? She didn't know what that chick's process was. She could be fucking killing it. Okay, I know I'm talking about like fictional characters, but she could be fucking hustling her ass off in acting class and you know, doing all sorts of things that maybe the, the Eliza's character didn't know about. But I'm just saying, can we show up with more respect? Coot and I talk about this in a little bit different way, which I love in the interview today. And I just wanted to address the respect part of it. And so I recalibrated in that moment and I was like, okay, I'm going to show up with some real respect, <clears throat> exactly how I would want to be respected. I'm going to give that to somebody else, do unto others, right? As we would want done to us. So if you want that respect, can you, or is your show up game showing up with respect? Like Eliza could have shown up with respect and who knows what might've shifted for her. <laughs> I know. I'll let the fictional character part go. <clears throat> anyway, though, you get what I'm saying? What is your show up game respect wise? Can you respect other people? I just had a flash of like, you know, controversial figures. <sighs> but I, I think we're talking about people that are aligned with our vision, people that are peers in our in our, whatever your field is, your peer group. Can you find respect? Maybe they're younger. Maybe they're less experienced. Maybe they're less talented. Can you still find a respect in your heart? And I think maybe what's, what's underneath respect is love and honoring somebody else's path. And then it's different than yours and that we don't know their story. We don't know how they got there. We don't know what specific things went on. Can you respect it? Oof, I like it. I like it. I'm trying really hard to stand in that space of respect and respect everybody's path 
And you know what? Maybe we don't, you don't invite them because it's just not quite there. Who cares? I can still respect someone, right? Yes. Yes. And recognize the bit of ego that is in there, you know? And so many times I'll like, not only have that respect issue, but I'll have the flair around ego and like, oh, they're coming from ego. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I should, you know, point that finger back at myself. <laughs> and like, how much am I coming from ego in those moments? Quite a bit, usually. Quite a bit. So where's your soul sitting? And speaking of where your soul is sitting, let's get into the discussion today, the conversation, the beautiful wisdom sharing and light sharing and incredibleness of Coot Blackson. Loved this guy. I have never met him. We just met today. He's an inspirational speaker and a transformational teacher. And his mission is to awaken and inspire people across the planet to access inner freedom, live authentically, and fulfill their life's true purpose. Sounds pretty damn good, right? I'm, I certainly feel all that. I'm all about transforming into our best version. So we do get into some of his habits too, a little bit of his practices around how he stays in this very powerful mindset that he's in and some of his his powerful ways to, like what I was just talking about, powerful ways to manifest, to supercharge your manifestation, I believe he calls it. So he speaks all across the world. He's coming to us today from Mexico City. And he speaks, he's spoken at oh, basically a whole host of things. And he's a member of the Transformational Leadership Council, um, which is a select group of a hundred of the world's foremost authorities in personal development industry. Very cool. And he won the 2019 Unity New Thought Walden Award. So he's a next generational leader uh, in personal development. And I'm just so stoked to have him on the show today and to get to connect with him and hear from him. And I did just listen to his book, which we talk about. It's called The Magic of Surrender. I listened to it on Audible and he reads it and it's an absolutely great read or listen. So highly recommended to pick up his new book that just came out in May. So let's get to it today. We'll also have a wrap up at the end. Stick around for that. Let's get to it with Coot Blackson. And remember, you can find him at Coot Blackson, K-U-T-E-B-L-A-C-K-S-O-N.com or the same thing, Coot Blackson on Instagram or Facebook. Guess what that sound is? That's right. I'm drinking Sovereignty's Purpose Plus. I love it. I drink it. I try to drink it with every single show. It is one of my favorite supplements. And it's not like I rely on it, but I just recognize that I feel good and I perform better when I'm drinking it. And that is what it's all about with Sovereignty. They have game-changing supplements that take your workouts to the next level. They make your to-do list easier. They just make you perform better and and on the flip side of that, falling asleep easier and your sleep recovery better too with their Dream Plus. So first off, my favorite right here that I'm drinking is the Purpose Plus. Purpose Plus is a blend of CBD, CBG, and they have studied all of these supplements. If you missed my podcast with them, it is freaking so good, y'all. It's so incredible the amount of study that they've put into their supplements. This one is mood enhancing. It's hemp derived ingredients with seven clinically studied ingredients and the world's best adaptogens that deliver results that you can feel pretty much immediately. And they can, they say you can use it almost like a microdose. Like if you want something that's not a microdose, but feels like it you can do that too, and just be still with it. And it works that way too. It doesn't make you jittery doesn't have a big caffeine rush or anything like that. Uh, it also empowers and supports your mind and body to feel better and just to be better and achieve new levels of productivity or not, or new levels of like self-work productivity, which is badass. Also about sleep, they have Dream Plus, which relaxes and calms your mind and helps you fall asleep and stay asleep longer. It uh, contains five clinically studied ingredients, CBD, CBN, and adaptogens to heal your body from the day while you sleep. And sometimes I just take half because I don't take a lot of sleep supplements. And it even says on the package, if you're sensitive to sleep su supplements or anything like that, just take half and see how you feel. And I do. And I feel great. If you 
aren't happy with your results and you order this, then they have a 30 day money back guarantee, which is awesome. They stand behind their product. So you can use code AMYAMY for 20% off your purchase. Find out no risk, why I love it, why I'm about to chug this right now. Just go to Sovereignty.co, S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-T-Y.co, or they have an easier web address too now, Sov, S-O-V dot live. And you can get 20% off your first order. Remember, that's with code Amy, A-M-Y. Coot, um, this is such uh, like a welcome surprise. I um, was not too familiar with your work and it came into my life and I am very excited to just surrender. And I read your book. Well, okay. I listened to your book. So I'm very familiar <laughs> with your voice. And um, it was such a wonderful <laughs> listen, The Magic of Surrender. And so what did I do? You know, I just surrendered to the moment today too. I was like, I'm not going to prepare too much. I'm just going to... Awesome. <laughs> you have a podcast, don't you? Yeah, soul talk. Do you surrender in your podcasts like that a lot with your guests, or what yeah, I, I, I like I love to flow with where the energy of things are going, and so I do that in my podcast. I also do that more and more in life. You know, in life, I'm I do have certain intentions, but for the most part, I'm planning much less and just really following the energy of where life is moving, and I found it to be even more amazing. Well, one of the stories that struck me in your book so much was the one where you just decided to fly wherever you were going to go. And you ended up in Bali. And I don't know if you want to tell a little bit about that. Yeah, story. well, basically, I did my I did a, I do an event in Bali. So I was in Bali for, for almost three weeks, finished my 12 day event. And I flew back to what did I do? I flew back to the, the US. I had to sign <clears throat> some paperwork for some real estate stuff, signed that. I went to Tulum, uh, Mexico, where I also live. And I was there for two days, literally. And I was thinking I have about seven days, six to seven days where I don't have to be in a location. I can travel. I can work from wherever. I can create from wherever. And so I thought, I'd love to travel somewhere. So now I'm waiting for the guidance, <clears throat> waiting for the universe to show me. I'm like, okay, where is this mystical, magical, special place I'm supposed to be? It's got to be somewhere like so special. And so I'm on my way to Mexico waiting for the inspiration. Inspiration's not coming. I'm like, <laughs> shit, when, when is this inspiration coming? I'm like, surely by the time I get on the plane to go back to LA, I'll get my inspiration. No inspiration. Okay? <laughs> I land at LAX. I, this was Delta. So I get, uh, I think Delta Terminal was like Terminal 2. Delta, no inspiration. So I just walk over to Tom Bradley International Airport in, in LA. And I'm walking around Tom Bradley and there's Qantas Airlines and there's, you know, Thai Air, there's all these different airlines. So I just start walking up to the different booths and say, well, how much is it to go to uh, Australia? Where do you want to go? I'm like, I have no idea. Uh, where do you go? We go to Brisbane, we go to Sydney. How much is it to Brisbane? How much is it to Sydney? So I just start asking. They look at me like, you don't have no idea where you want to go? So I say, I say I'll be back. So then I go to uh, uh, Eva Air. They're like, where do you go? Taipei, how much is it? We, you still can get on the flight. Then I, I'm like, I'll be back. Then I go to uh, Philippines there. Uh, when's your flight? It's <laughs> in three hours. It's $800. I'll be back. I'm like, I still don't get the guidance. I wander over. I see Thai Airlines, okay? <clears throat> Bangkok, $670, regular ticket. All I know is I feel that yes feeling inside. I feel the yes feeling. Now, my mind <clears throat> is saying, this is crazy. I've been to Thailand so many times. I just came back from Asia. I don't want to go back. And so, But the guidance is so strong that it's moving me. The energy is moving me in that direction. Everything feels like a yes. I'm kind of denying it, resisting it. But sometimes what I found is what your soul guides you to do <clears throat> is not always convenient. What your soul guides you to do is not about convenience and comfort. It's about evolution. It has its own intelligence and intention. So I'm, I say, okay, I buy my ticket to, to Thailand, uh, figuring when I get to Thailand, I'm going to get the guidance for where I'm meant to go. <laughs> I end up in Thailand, <clears throat> in Bangkok, <clears throat> still no guidance yet. There I am sitting at the airport. Cut long story short, my guidance says Bali. And now I'm thinking, 
I was just in Bali three days ago. This is insane. You mean I went all the way around to come back, but and I'm resisting, resisting. And that's what we tend to do when our soul guides us. We get this guidance. We we, we start, first we're in denial, right? Like, yeah, because I think a little part of me would have been like, oh, I'm just thinking Bali because, Bali because I just went to Bali. You know, I like was, I was not thinking Bali because I just went to Bali. I'm, that's the last place I wanted to go. I just spent three, four weeks there working. I don't want to go back, spend the six days I have in Bali. But sometimes life has a deeper intention. And so I end up in Bali. My taxi driver picks me up, the guy who drives me around. And he looks at me and he says, you're back again. I'm like, why are you here? I say to him, I have no idea why I'm here. So I, this was New Year's time, the day before New Year's. So there, there weren't many places available. I stay in a place. I end up at this party, New Year's Eve party. I leave before New Year's. I walk around the rice fields like, universe, why the hell am I here? The next day... I go to uh, get some food. I'm going to go get some fish, my favorite place called Clear Cafe. On my way there, the same intuition says, don't go there, go to this other vegan restaurant. But I don't want vegan food. I end up at this vegan <laughs> restaurant. <coughs> the, the place is packed. There's two tables available. One huge table for six people, one small table for two people. I figure I'm going to go to the small table. They put me at the big table. I sit there, two hours into sitting there, I'm eating my food, Say, universe, why the hell am I back here? And I say, I'm not leaving until I get some answers. So I just start journaling and I'm just sitting at the table, minding my own business. Two, three hours go by. All of a sudden, this guy walks through the door. This is in like the jungles of Bali, okay? Walks through the door of this vegan restaurant. My eyes pop open because this is a guy I have been trying to, at least before, for like 10 years, was trying to get a meeting with, you know? And, and I'm trying to get, I was trying to get a meeting with this guy, impossible to get a meeting with this guy walks through the door by himself in the middle of Bali in the jungle. And I'm thinking, this is so surreal. He walks in, looks around. My mind is thinking, should I approach him? Should I not approach him? Should I make it happen? Something says, no, everything is always is in divine flow. Just wait. So I'm just going to wait. Not my style. I'm just going to sit and wait. <clears throat> he walks out because there's no room. There's no seats. His friend who he came in with comes up to my table. So he's gone. His friend comes in. She says, do you mind if I sit here? Me and my friend are looking for a table. I'm like, sure. So she sits there. He comes back, sits right next to me, right on my right, right there, says hi, says hi. Me and her start a conversation. Then him and I start a conversation. We end up speaking for three hours. He's like, what are you doing here? And I say to him, I have no idea. Maybe it's to meet, <laughs> but maybe it's to meet you, you know? And he looks at me and he says, God's plan. It's God's plan. And so that was part of the journey. Then, his, then he leaves. His assistant comes in. His assistant says, what, what are you doing in Bali? I'm like, I, was, I tell her the whole story. I don't know why I'm here. She says, if you have a good... So she said, where are you going next? I say, I have no idea where I'm going <laughs> next, but let's see. She says, if you ever go to Hong Kong, I have a friend that you should meet. Pick out my phone. I buy a ticket to Hong Kong. Within that minute, I end up in Hong Kong. That evening, I'm in Hong Kong. Oh, my God. Literally following the... This is like day two of my trip. I'm in Hong Kong. No idea why I'm in Hong Kong. She messages me. says, did you meet my friend? Oh, that's right. Her friend. So I meet the friend. He says, what are you doing here? He's a big media guy that I had no idea. He's like, anything you need in media, you know, I got you covered. The other guy also was this huge media guy. And so he's like, anything you need in media in, in Asia, I got you covered. And he says, what are you doing in Hong Kong? I have no idea what the hell I'm doing in Hong Kong. He says, I need you to be my friend. I'm like, okay, she's an actress. I'm like, okay, you know, sure, I'm, I'm from LA. That doesn't mean anything to me, actresses, actresses, whatever. So so I'm like, whatever. So uh, I get a message from his friend. She's like, oh, my friend wanted us to meet. Here's, here's, the, here's my house address. I don't even know this person. I end up, so I knock on the door of her apartment. I walk in instant connection she ends up like my sister you know i end up counseling her about her relationship that she almost broke up this and that blah 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 and cut a long story short she's like one of the top actresses in china ends up one of my dearest friends i mean just story goes on so it was just a trip of so many unplanned synchronicities magic miracles that i could never have planned had i that would never have happened had I planned it and I could never have planned to make happen. And I think it just goes to show sometimes some of the best things in life happen when we're not planning. I think our job is to simply follow the flow. And when we follow the flow and go in that direction, 
the universe, nature starts supporting us because we are working in harmony, in sync with nature itself. So because we're, we're working in harmony with nature, we're in flow of nature, nature seeks to fulfill itself through us and in our life. And so that was that crazy story of surrender. I loved it. But you did it. You said, I thought in the book that you did it as kind of an experiment as you were writing the book. Yeah. Look, here I'm writing a book on surrender. So I figured if I'm going to teach surrender, which, you know, has has been a kind of a passion of mine, but if I'm going to really teach it at a next level, I got to be, I have to be stretching myself to the, to the edges of my comfort zone of surrender on all levels. So that's why I just threw myself into the fire and said, I'm not going to, I'm just going to see what it was a truly an experiment. I'm going to see what happens if I, if I actually make zero plan and follow every single flow and every single clue. We, ha- we tend to have this fear that if we surrender, shit's going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, we're going to be homeless. I'm going to get kidnapped. You know, <laughs> uh, the worst thing's going to happen. You know, there's a misconception that surrender is weak. Surrender is passive. That surrender means giving up. It means being taken advantage of. It means being left behind. That if you surrender, you won't manifest your goals, your dreams, your desires. So I wanted to prove like, if you surrender, what if you actually manifested? What if you actually got experienced more, more than you could plan, more than you could imagine. And so this, this uh, experiment was, it, it, it was unscripted. It was unplanned, but it, it, it could have fallen flat on my, I could have fallen flat on my face, but I really wanted to see what happens when I really surrender and let go and completely 100% trust life. And part of surrender is to stop trying to control every little thing in our lives, which only tends to cause suffering. And if last year has shown us anything, we probably aren't in as much control as we <laughs> thought we were in anyway, right? right. It, control is a, in a an illusion. I call it the master addiction. And so to surrender is to let go of the illusion of control. To surrender is to stop trying to force life to fit into some idea of what we think life should be and how we think our life should be and the life we think we should be living as uh, where we stop trying to force and manipulate life to be something so that we can just truly open ourselves, open our hearts, open our minds to receive to the life that is actually seeking to express through us. And uh, that's when I think the magic happens. So surrender is living with a curiosity, living with an openness. Surrender is not weakness. Surrender is not passivity. You know, sometimes to surrender is to dare to be fully who we are and not compromise our truth. And sometimes surrender means saying no. Sometimes surrender means making hard decisions. Sometimes surrender means facing the truth that you don't want to face and surrendering to the truth that you don't want to face. And so surrender, I think, takes a tremendous amount of courage. If you look at all of the great ones, right? Jesus, Buddha, Gandhi, Muhammad Ali, Bob Marley, Bruce Lee, David Bowie, Oprah, Elon Musk, Mandela, the list goes on. At some point, they all had to surrender themselves to a vision that was bigger than themselves. They all had like Martin Luther King. They wanted Martin Luther King to lead the civil rights movement for many years, but he kept resisting because he knew the challenges that it would take. And so I say Martin Luther King could have remained a local preacher and stayed in the safe zone. Gandhi, right? Gandhi had a nice life, prestige as a lawyer, very successful. Gandhi could have given up his fight for the untouchables and and, and simply pursued prestige as, as a lawyer. Mother Teresa could have stayed in the safety of her convent rather than go following her soul's calling, going to the streets and serving the sick and the poor. There was a vi- bigger vision that was calling each of them. And so I think surrender is the key to all of the great ones. I actually think surrender and this, this concept is what we as a humanity in this last year, COVID, pandemic, et cetera, et cetera, what we are actually being uh, initiated into a whole new way of being as a species, a whole new way of living that is that is less about the ego-based uh, model or way of living the world, which is all about control, which is all about what do I want? That's the question we ask in that old ego-based model of creating your life. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And you might get what you thought you wanted, only to realize that mm, 
is this it? Or you might get what you thought you wanted based on who you thought you were, only to then realize what you thought you wanted is not what you really wanted. It's just what you thought you wanted based on who you thought you were, which is often a projection and patterns of conditioning from the past and generations and society and media. But the new paradigm I believe we are moving into, which is what I'm really excited about in terms of sharing the book Magic of Surrender, is a paradigm of surrender. And that is a whole new way of living in cooperation with life itself. When we surrender, I believe we open ourselves bigger than ourselves. We start transcending ourselves, transcending our ego. Then we open to the infinite possibilities, the infinite potential, the infinite power of life to to flow through us because we are getting ourselves out of the way. So the question in this new paradigm is really, what is it that life wants to express through me? What is it that the universe, what is that life wants to manifest through me? What is the deepest impulse of what life wants to express through me, live through me, create through me, and open to that and allow ourselves to be lived by life? And so that's a bit about. I I agree. And I love everything you're saying. And for me in my own life, it's been something I've had to cultivate a practice around. And I'm curious what your practice around that looks like. Do you forget? And what does that look like? And when you do, how do you come back to it? I mean, you, you, I, I, you know, you, you seem to be pretty uh, structured as far as, you know, you have your, like our appointment today, you have a team, you yes, know, people yes, telling yes, you where yes, to be yeah. and that kind of thing. So, you know, you do have a, a schedule and those kind of yes. things. And yes. And so, one so, thing, so, so. Oh. <laughs> and one thing oh, I like okay. about you is you do uh, talk about surrender, but you also talk about the action too. But I guess I'm, I am really curious though about your practices of staying with that and your like habits around it. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a good question. Surrender, just to clarify too, it, it is not just going with the flow of whatever you feel like in the moment. <laughs> Oh, you know, there's kind of a, a spiritual, let's just, I'm just going to go with the flow. If we have an appointment, but I just, the flow, I just, the flow is just something else. I just won't show up. That's not freaking surrender. That's irresponsibility. <laughs> and that's laziness. I'm just going to go with the flow. And I don't feel like writing my book right now. I don't feel like exercising. So I'm not going to do it. That's just called lazy. You have that's a, you have a is. lot about responsibility. And yes, I love surrender, that. I love that. Surrender is responsibility. Surrender Mm -hmm. is responsibility. It is a surrendering to the deeper intention. It is a surrendering to the deeper calling. It is a surrendering to the deeper mission. Because when you surrender to the deeper mission, there's a deeper motivation. When you are living just following the flow of emotion, of feeling, of thinking, you are just a slave because Many times feeling, thinking, emotion uh, are just conditioned patterns based on our own nervous system and our own conditioning from the past, insecurities, fears, what have you. Mm -hmm. So what are we surrendering to? What we're surrendering to is actually a limited uh, identity. That's not like a rumination almost. It's almost like surrendering to a rumination. That's not the real flow, right? right. So, so, so real surrender is not surrendering to just the fleeting feeling of the moment, but the deeper motivation and impulse. For instance, when I wrote my book, I would sit my ass down every day and write this damn thing. Now, I didn't feel, there were many days I didn't feel like writing. I actually don't like writing. I've written two books. I don't enjoy the process. I'd rather be walking in the park. I'd rather be hanging out with friends. I'd rather be, you know, doing traveling and just... Drinking some chai tea or something, (laughs) right? Watching a movie. But when I really, what I had to do, like real surrender is feeling like the resistance and not following that superficial flow. Feeling the resistance, and this is where most people get stuck. They're like, well, I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go hang out with friends. No, it might mean saying no to something lesser. So you say yes to something deeper and more authentic. And for me, the deeper, more authentic flow was the transformation of people's lives who read my book, feeling the transformation of lives that would change around the world. And despite my resistances, with that deeper commitment is what pulled me through to tap into, to surrender to a deeper flow beyond my own human level 
I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If we if we just follow our momentary moods, we will never truly fulfill our greatness. So for someone who preaches surrender, my life is actually incredibly, I'm gonna see if I can show now if you'll see it. My life is actually incredibly, incredibly structured. Okay, incredibly structured. I woke up at 6:30 this morning, did my exercise one hour. 30 minutes of meditation from 9.30. Here's my day. This is it. Yeah. Amy Edwards. This is it. Yeah. It is, this is, I go till 9 p.m. That's the flow of surrender because I have a commitment to impact people. I have a deeper commitment to touch people. I have a, so my days are structured and I believe that structure can actually create the space for more freedom to flow. Because if you have the structure of, okay, between, let's just say between 10 and 2, I'm going to write. I'm not going to let anything divert me. No distractions, no phone calls, no, no internet, no Instagram, nothing. I'm going to write. Then you'll focus and channel your energies during that time, right? So long as obviously writing is authentic. And then we're not talking about doing something that is not meaningful to you. We're not talking about doing something that's inauthentic. You're doing something that's authentic. But now you have the structure where you channel your energies during that time, knowing that after that time, you're free to do whatever you want. You're free to hang out, lie down, climb a tree, or you know, jump in the ocean, whatever you want to do, waste time, watch Netflix. But 10 to 2, that's your focus time where you're following the deeper flow of your purpose. Then you can just flow however you want. And so that's kind of how I work. I think structure, a lot of people uh, that don't get shit done don't create any structure. And I think structure allows the freedom to flow. And so I'm free to flow. I'm working in Mexico City this week. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm having some meetings here. Uh, I'm getting some stuff done, working every day. But it allows me now to have that flexibility to flow. If you just do whatever you want, whenever you want, chances are you will not you'll actually have less bandwidth to flow because when you're flowing, part of your energy will be, will be consumed and thinking about, oh, shit, that, the book I didn't write, you know, the homework I didn't do, the work I didn't get done, the phone calls I didn't make. But you're having fun over here. But we're talking surrender is deeper than fun. Maybe that's so, it. So, so. It's listening to those little things that are like nagging at us that are telling us, you know, like, you know, you get the invitation to go to the beach or whatever. And you're like, oh, this is life telling me to flow and go. But I didn't get that work done. And I know that's going to like hang over. It's like I will literally have things just sort of hang over me. And I'm like, I know this is something that I'm called to do. <sighs> are you are you suppressing that? And that's maybe yeah. that's that God voice. That's that surrender voice. What do you think yeah. of that? Yeah, it, it's following. That's why true, real surrender is following that deeper impulse and that deeper flow. Ooh. And that's why I say sometimes surrender requires discipline. There's many things I have to say no to. There's many uh, invitations to hang out with people that I sometimes have to say no to because I'm, I'm committed to podcasts. I'm committed to getting my book done. I'm committed to certain projects that is that is in, a, in alignment with my true purpose and intention. There it was. And that's the key. That's yeah? the key. When, when it's in alignment with my true purpose and intention, then the saying no to something is not a deprivation. Saying no to something is saying yes to something deeper. And when people really get that, you start realizing, I'm going to say something that might sound a little strange. You start realizing there's a deeper freedom that comes in the saying no. And so here's one thing I found for myself. The deeper I go spiritually, the deeper I go into my spirituality, my connection with the, with the divine, into the process of surrendering myself to be used by life. That's my prayer in our life. Use me in the highest way possible. The deeper I go into that spiritual alignment and connection, the less choice I have. I want to repeat. Okay. The deeper I go, the less choice I have, the freer I feel. <laughs> Everything's a paradox because, I'm discovering. Yes, so. <laughs> because, because, because the deeper you go, the less choice you have, because certain things that your ego wanted to do before, because you're transcending that, going beyond that, are no longer an option. 
no longer give me a specific example. I want a specific. So, example. so, so, so people say, well, freedom, freedom is do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, with whoever, with, with whoever I want, however many times I want. That's not freedom. Eating this seventeenth tub of Hagen Dazs, and you know, it's not freedom. You can do it. You're going to feel like shit over time. You're going to get unhealthy. That's not freedom. You know. So, so for instance, me saying no to the seventh scooping of, of ice cream is not self-deprivation. It's actually freedom because then it gives me over time the energy and ability to have so much energy in myself because I'm not fitting myself with junk foods and terrible foods and et cetera, et cetera, that now I have the freedom, like I can go 20 hours a day I, because I say no to certain things. So, free, so, so saying no gives you deeper freedom. When we are locked in our ego, which is identity, who we think we are based on parents and conditioning, society, et cetera, then uh, the more choice you seem to have, I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. The less free you are. So Mandela, okay, as an example, he could have, here he is, 27 years in prison. He could have probably not gone down that path Said, screw that. I don't want to be in prison. Who, uh, who the hell wants to be in prison? He could have not gone down that path. He could have maybe taken a different path, you know, changed a few things, right? Said, said a few things less. But I think when he was really in his alignment of his soul, his truth, he knew what he had to do. He knew what he had to say. He knew the actions that needed to be taken that there may be a risk. So on some level, when he was in his alignment and surrender, he didn't have a choice. I mean, he had a choice, but when you're in alignment, he didn't really have a choice. And that, and as a result, that choice led him where it led him, but look at where that led him in the long run. You know, there's a phrase in the Bible, I, I'm, I'm, I come from a church background, I left the church, it's not a religious thing, but it's a spiritual term, thy will be done. You know, we, we hear that like, thy will be done, universe, sure. God, Allah, creator, whatever people believe, thy will be done. What does that mean? I think the, the, the more we uncondition ourselves from our egoic tendencies, insecurities, patterns, the more we come into alignment with our soul, the more my will comes into alignment with the highest intention of life, thy will. The highest intention of life that's seeking to happen and your will start aligning. Mm -hmm. And so certain things that you used to do, you know you can't do anymore. You know you can't cheat, steal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera anymore because maybe you used to be able to do it when you were more unconscious, but the deeper you go, you realize it's not an option anymore. And so that's what I mean. The more freedom, Mandela had a bigger freedom. Gandhi had a bigger freedom. And so I think... The real freedom in life is in surrendering to our soul and living in alignment with that. That's, yeah. that's really what I'm saying. And yours is about changing and transforming lives. Mine yes. is too. Mine is too. You know, that's why we're sitting here right now. And, you yes. know, um, I went through a thing not too long ago. Part of your book really spoke to me when you were talking about... Um, that conference that you put on only two people showed up and you were like, well, oh. fuck this. I'm going to go cry in the bathroom and <laughs> no one's here, um, you know? And I know that was a long time ago for you, but it was really powerful because I think a lot of people can relate to that. You know, they want to do these big things in the world, but it's really about if you are showing up in alignment, like you're saying, and making a difference to those two people or one person. You know, you don't yeah. know where that's leading you. And I, I thought that was really beautiful because there was, there's so much ego and story that we can get wrapped up in that we want it a certain way. Again, goes back to control, like you were saying, and wanting it our way. And, and instead we can allow and release and just show up and give our all from the heart wholeheartedly, like you speak about. This podcast is sponsored by Better Help. BetterHelp.com is a professional therapy service, and I want to talk about it. And I'm excited to partner with them because I know that, that I've had times in my life where I definitely leaned on mental health services and therapy, and I really needed it. And it really, really helped me with my own goals and living my life in the way that I wanted to. When you just feel like mentally you can't quite get there on your own. 
you know? And yes, we come to things like this, but sometimes that one-on-one help is just the push that we need. And that's what BetterHelp is here for. So what they can do is assess your needs and match you with your own licensed therapist, professionally licensed therapist, which is so rad. And they have tons of expertise, a broad range in case there's something specific that you need help with that you might not be able to find in your own area. Sometimes, you know, maybe you need to tailor it to addiction or maybe divorce or whatever you might be going through. They have a big range of people that they can pair you with. So it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy that's done securely online and available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime you want and send a message to your therapist and they respond and communicate with you. And initially they'll start within 48 hours, which is so cool and more than you can get you know, when you're just trying to book it locally. So BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change therapists if you need to, because that can be really challenging. And it's more affordable than traditional offline therapy as well. They also have financial aid available. So cool. Um, They want you to help. They want to help you start living a happier life today. And yeah, That's the goal, right? To get happier in the now. So you can visit betterhelp.com slash AES. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join over 1 million people who've already taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Uh, So many people have been using it as a matter of fact that they're already recruiting more therapists in all 50 states. So the special offer is for the listeners here of the Amy Edwards show. That's 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash AES for Amy Edwards show, betterhelp.com. Anyway, that really resonated with me. And I think that probably speaks to a lot of people too, and just, yeah. just proceed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so important that as human beings, especially in wanting to live a purpose, we we have these big visions, but I think it's important that we, we, we respond. We start where we are exactly as we are, who we are with, who we're with. And we learn to respond to the need in the moment right here. Look around. Like if you want to really do something important, powerful, live a purpose, make an impact, start where you are. Many times you're like, I want to change the world revolution, but we're not even picking up the, the, the crap on the street. You know, we're, we're not seeing our neighbor who's 85 years old that maybe just needs her, her, her groceries carried, right? But we want to do all this big stuff. And so I think when we can just begin where we are, then every moment can be an expression of living our purpose. And so I say start where you are with what you have exactly as you are. One of, the, I think, the best ways that we can truly impact the world because sometimes it's easy to look at the world and go, oh my God, how will I make a difference? It's a little so, overwhelming. So it's a little <laughs> overwhelming. But, but I, and so then we don't even bother starting. Like, ah, I'm just yeah, going like, to go watch. Fuck it. Watch, I like it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to go watch Netflix and just forget about right. all of this insanity. But I really think that no action is too small. We are all interconnected. And so if you really want to make a difference, but you're not sure, one of the greatest ways we can is to start with ourselves. The world is a mirror manifestation. The world we see out here is a mirror manifestation of you, me, and the collective consciousness of every single human being combined. So when we look at the president and we look at the prime ministers and we look at the mayors and we look at the leaders and we look at the state of the world, the state of the world is a collective reflection of our own consciousness and our unconscious and unconscious projected out here. The, The war out here. Well, there's a war going on inside of us. There is a division out here. There, Many of us were so divided within our own self. Terrorism out here, dropping bombs. Many of us were dropping bombs of self-hatred and judgment inside of our own consciousness, not enoughness every single day. Police brutality. I'm not saying that's right, but many of us were so brutal. We're brutalizing ourselves with, 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 with stories that aren't even true and, and causing so much damage inside. And so I think if we really want to affect the world, we have to really the world is a mirror of our own consciousness. And what we can do is begin to look at the world and, and look at the leaders and look at the presidents and go, what is the world? What are these people reflecting to me about myself? And maybe I can't change the government. Maybe I can't change the mayor. Maybe I can't change the president. 
but I can change myself. And so how can I be more compassionate with myself and bring more peace in my heart and forgive myself for stuff I've done in the past and forgive those I've been, you know, holding anger and hatred to inside of my heart and really bring inner peace to our own state of being inside over time. That is a profound self-responsibility and gift we get to give the planet because the energy of the planet will shift, even if it's a little bit. And if I do my part, you do your part, everyone does their part, then the projection onto the screen of life called the world that we see will also change. And so no action is too small. Every time you forgive, you're shifting the fabric of consciousness for humans. Every time you love, you're shifting the fabric of consciousness. Every time you, you're a little more kind, you are creating ripples of that energy into the world. And so even the small things make a difference. How are you in business? Like, uh, how, do you, how do you function all that in your day-to-day life with the people that are scheduling you and with how you show up? I mean, are you, do you stay in all that with everyone that works for you? How is it working for you? And like, what are you like? Well, be, 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 be more specific because I, look, I, I, I am very focused. I'm very intentional. You know, I'm very loving, but loving doesn't mean putting up with bullshit. You know, loving doesn't mean taking abuse. Loving doesn't no. mean being a door, being a doormat. Loving and loving doesn't loving also doesn't mean uh, just letting people be mediocre and less that they can be. To me, loving true love is seeing who someone really is and 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 calling that inner potential forward. True love is to serve the soul evolution of each person you meet. And so with those I work with, those on my team, uh, I'm more committed to serving their soul's evolution. I'm more committed to them maximizing their potential. I'm more committed to them. So, so I'm firm, I'm straight, I'm honest, but I'm really interested in those around me, those that are, that are working with me, growing and evolving, not just we do a job together. It, it's about, are you growing? Are you evolving? So I'm constantly finding ways to stretch my team, to stretch those around me, to grow, to evolve, to, to be their best, not just, not for me, but ultimately for themselves when no one's looking to me, that's leadership, right? And so mm-hmm. for me, I'm interested in, in, in work and business, developing leaders, those that really are committed to service and committed to being and maximizing their own fullest potential, whether anyone is around or whether anyone isn't. And so that's kind of how I operate. But for me, it's about honesty. It's about integrity. It's about truth and keeping things very clear. What are some of the things you would do with your team to stretch and grow them as people? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly questioning and, and challenging and, you know, <laughs> uh, pushing and, 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 and you know, in, in firm ways. I just, I just don't let people get away with stuff. Like, yeah, that's fine. No, it's not fine. In a loving way, hey, let's handle that. Like, like let's 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 go beyond that. But it, it's not for me. It's 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 to have the pride for someone to have the pride within themselves for themselves. That is part of evolution. You know, for me, part of where it comes from is I started running. Uh, at a very young age, jogging. I was a fat kid. So I started exercising and jogging at a very young age. And I probably missed (coughs) between when I started about 11 or 12. And I I, I missed maybe one day uh, a year, you know, at most. And so when I go to Japan with my mother, you know, this African Japanese kid, right, in Japan, uh, the only non-Japanese person in my grandmother's village, I would sometimes wake up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. if we had to leave early in the snow and run and jog. I mean, Japanese snow is no joke. I mean, it's like serious. And for me, it wasn't for anyone else. It wasn't for social media because there was no social media back then. It wasn't for Instagram so I could show anyone else. It was for my own inner integrity. It was for my own inner freedom, right? And so I really did it for myself in that sense. And I think part of leadership and why I'm really committed to 
those around me being leaders, you can't lead anyone else until you first lead yourself. And there's many people that are trying to lead other people, but they can't lead themselves. Oof. They can't get themselves to, 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 to walk one mile, right? That's good. Uh, they, they, they can't get themselves to like stop eating the, 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 the tub of ice cream, right? And so how do we truly influence others when we can't influence ourselves? And that's where uh, leadership starts. And I think when we truly live in that alignment with ourselves, even when no one's watching, and not for anyone else, we start to develop an internal alignment, an internal integrity, an internal strength and confidence within ourselves because we know who we are. And then when you speak and when you communicate and when you speak to those around you, speak to your kids, speak to your team, you are leading the, the resonance of your internal conviction transmits and, and transforms and has an impact. And you end up leading through example. And I think that's what we really need more than anything in today's world are leaders that don't just talk a good talk because they read some books, but they're leading it through the embodiment of how they live their life. That's key. Oof. Ah, that was, yes, yes. That was fucking dope. I loved, I loved all of that. Um, thank you. And I have a, I, I love affirmations. I put them all over the place in my sure. room and all that. I don't know if you're into that, but <laughs> one of them that I have on my altar right now says it is my responsibility to be my highest version. And I think that like, just, that just came up for me as you were talking. Would you agree with that? I think you probably would. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's my responsibility to be my, yes, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not your husband's responsibility, your wife's responsibility. I view it as my responsibility to God or higher power. It, yes, it's, it, it's, it's just your responsibility to yourself to be your highest version. I think God, the universe, whatever, whatever you believe, we've been given everything we need, everything, the potential. Uh, sadly, not everyone will fulfill their potential in this lifetime. Sadly, as we've seen throughout history, just because of the choices we make, just because we're not committed, just because we're lazy, et cetera, et cetera. But we all have the capacity. And, and so I think part of changing one's life, transforming one's life, one of the first places to start is the willingness to take radical responsibility for yourself and who you are. This was a phrase from my first book. So actually, I think it's on the back of my book. It says, no one's coming. No, it's the first, it's the, it might be actually the first sentence. <laughs> no one's coming. Nobody's coming. No one's going to, Santa Claus isn't coming. Your Buddha's not coming. Your parents aren't coming. Did you write that kind of like to yourself in that moment too? Exactly. exactly. (laughs) That's where, that's, that's how I ended up writing in my book because one, but it started very young. I was, I was like 19, 20 years old. I had just moved to the U S living in a tiny shoebox apartment with a mattress. I pulled off the street and literally, I was eating bread for a week, stealing bread, actually, trying to eat to survive in downtown Los Angeles. And I remember one day I was just wallowing, wallowing in misery of not feeling loved by my father, not feeling the support. And there's other people who have parents and their family, and they get money, and they get a, they get a foundation to start, and a trust fund, this, that. I was just wallowing. And like, I wish I had some support, some help. And and. It was like after hours of crying and wallowing, I felt this epiphany. And it, it was the sense of nobody owes you anything. It was like a voice I heard. No, nobody owes you anything. God doesn't owe you anything. Your parent, your dad doesn't owe you anything. He gave you life. Your mom does not. Nobody, I mean, not that it wouldn't be nice, but no one owes you anything. And I got in that moment that if I really wanted to shift my life, one of the things I had to give up, one of the things I had to do was take responsibility for who I am and who I'm going to be. And one of the things I had to give up was any sense of entitlement. Any sense of entitlement had to go. And I realized I have two hands. I'm healthy. I'm sane. I, I, what else do I need? And that's when I really took it on myself to be happy, to be fulfilled, and to, to, to start uh, fulfilling and becoming the highest version of myself. So I think we all have the power inside of us. Here's the thing. We all want to be great. You know, we look at, we look at Michael Jordan. Oh, he's amazing. And Bruce Lee, he's amazing. You know, Gandhi, he's amazing. But we often don't want to do what they did and make the sacrifices that they made. We want to be like them, 
But we don't realize what they had to do with Jordan, what Kobe, what Oprah, what some of these, what Elon Musk, what they had to do to live that. So there's no shortcuts. There's no way to hack your way to greatness. Damn and integrity. it. <laughs> if no only, way. I know. You, you, you have to go through the process and make the sacrifices. That, or I would say the dedication. Dedicate yourself to the mastery of excellence, the mastery of your mind, your heart, your body, your intention, your awareness, so that you can become the person who can live that. And so greatness to me is what we all are. It's not some gift that's bestowed from the heavens or the skies. Uh, 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 the great ones, I think, just, you know, Mother Teresa, I think, for instance, she showed us our full potential as human beings in the area of loving. You know, uh, Gandhi showed us what we are capable of. Mandela showing us 27 years in prison comes out forgiving and uniting a country, showing us what we are all capable of. And so if he can do it, we can do it. There's even a quote in the Bible where Jesus says, I don't remember much of the Bible, but Jesus said something like, the things that I do, this is the miracle working Jesus, okay? The things that I do, you can do these things and more. There's one thing I remember from my childhood. The things I do, and this, this guy worked miracles, blind seeing, deaf hearing, turning water into wine, walking on water. The things I do, you can do these things and more. I take that seriously. Was he joking? Was he kidding? That was a true statement. So, so I think we should take it to heart and use what we have. Many times we're not using what we have and we want more. Yeah. We want more power. We want more potential, but we're not using what we have now. So I think when we use what we have now, for instance, when we take one, we turn it into two. When we take two and use two, we then are bestowed with four. Then we, we want to make a huge impact on the world, but we're not having a huge impact on our street, on our street corner, on our community. But we want to change the world. It doesn't work that way. You know, so we've got to start where we are. Mother Teresa started not with a billion, billion dollar endowment. She started by picking up one person. She looked at one sick person and she saw the Christ in that person. And she said, I'm going to pick them up. You know, Greta Thunberg, the young climate change activist, looked at the world, waited for everyone else to do something about it, realized no one else was doing anything and just decided to take her little billboard, stand outside of, I think it was the embassy, and that's where she began. And look at all the millions of people that are inspired by her. So I would say we have to just start. Yeah. We have to just start. And most of us, we never start because we're busy waiting for someone else to do it. Or we look at some of the great ones and we say, you know, Buddha was Jesus. Mother Teresa, Oprah, Elon, they're just special. They're gifted. They're special. That is an excuse and a cop-out that we don't even realize we make to abdicate responsibility of what we need to do to become that. Or so I want to, or sometimes people say, I'm too old, you know, like they look at Greta and they're like, oh, but <sighs> she's a child, you know, and the fear of failure creeps in and all those things, you know, that's ego, right? It's ego. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. always excuses. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm black. I'm white. I'm gay. I'm straight. I'm tall. I'm short. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too, there's always something, but there's always someone who is the exact thing and excuse you're making that's actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You're exactly <laughs> right. And we can see them more and more now on social media. Some of the great right. things about social media, you know, it shows us what's possible. I'm trying to focus on that, you know, not to get that yes. competitive spirit, not to get in that ego, but to rather see, okay, that's possible. That's possible. That's like God. You said showing. something really important, not to get in the ego. When you see, here's what I encourage people. If you really want to turbocharge your manifestation and success, when yeah. you see someone, when you see someone succeeding, one way is, yes, you just said, get in the ego. Oh, my God, why them? Why not me? Oh, my gosh, good, you know, this and that. And to go into contraction and jealousy and competitiveness, that's the old. But I want you, I, I want everyone to reframe and shift the paradigm. When you see someone succeeding, here's the key. Celebrate their success. Bless them, celebrate them, affirm them, send them good vibes, send them good energy, send them a nice you know, message. Celebrate their success. The more you celebrate another success the more you open your own psyche and consciousness to receiving the very thing that you are actually celebrating. 
You are affirming, as you affirm them, you affirm that possibility within yourself because that person is showing you what's possible. And as you affirm what's possible, you open yourself to what's possible. When you stay in the judgment and you stay in the, you know, the, 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 the competitiveness, you actually block your own blessing because you are actually affirming you don't think it can happen. You're oh, affirming. Well, you're saying maybe scarcity. putting a net, just, you're just putting negative in that too. Like the, the which, very which, thing you want, you're putting some negative in there, right? Which mm-hmm. closes you. When you put negative, you're being closed. As you close, you're less receptive to receiving that. When you celebrate their success like it's yours, you, you can't celebrate their success and be closed. <laughs> when you celebrate their success, you open your heart, you open your heart, your heart's open to receiving. Yeah. It gets challenging sometimes. I forget every now and then. And I have to like <laughs> re-remind myself, you know, <laughs> I mean, do you ever forget this stuff? Do you ever forget? Are you a master now though? Are you, are these practices so ingrained in you? Like, what do you think about when you're falling asleep at night? Or do you ever have moments where you get a little and you got to pull yourself back? Yeah, look, there's always challenges in life. You know, it's just part of life. Um, more and more, I've learned to trust life. And I've had so many different experiences, which will take another four-hour episode here, (laughs) but I've had so many different experiences of, let's say, things not working out, things not working out in my life. And looking back and going, like, in the moment, going, so heartbroken, like, relationships that didn't work, so heartbroken in the moment. But then I look back and go, thank now, thank (laughs) God, thank God that never worked out. That would have been a disaster if I married her, you know, that would have been great. So, so, so there's been so many moments of failure or things not working out in the moment from the perspective of the ego that's led me to appreciate and stay curious about what's happening more and more, you know, more and more. And so maybe there's moments of like, I wish it, but then I remember, Oh, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason that's happening right now. You may not see it. I may not see it. There's a reason. So more and more, I really do my best to um, to, to 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 not impose a knowing or a meaning on what something is. Because the moment we say, "Okay, this is what this means," we lock down on what we think it means, and we're not really open to life. Yeah. And, and you so know, more and more, I, ju- I just say, I don't know why this is happening right now. I don't know why. I mean, COVID was challenging. I left LA, uh, broke up a relationship, moved my office, moved my house, moved to Phoenix, sold my house in Phoenix, moved to my, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And well, not only that, your mother passed. My condolences on my your mo- mother. My mother passed away. I mean, that you can know, give you it, a huge question mark of like, why, you know? Like yeah, both my parents yeah. have passed. I, I understand. It's challenging. It's, it's, challenging. it's very challenging. Yeah. But I think we have to also remember and understand what life is. Life and the purpose of life. I really believe that we're souls and we incarnate into this human experience. We incarnate because there's certain lessons that we're here to learn. And so life to me is soul school. Life is a university for our souls. And so every relationship, every situation, every challenge, every difficulty, every, everything we go through is part of our soul's curriculum that has, some, that has a lesson for us to grow through and evolve through. And so all lessons repeated until learned. And so we've been conditioned to look at life from the goal line. Achievement, failure, what's happening on the surface level. They did this, they didn't do that. When we just look at life from that one-dimensional lens, it's very easy to get caught up in frustration and depression and upset. But when we start deepening our lens to go, okay, from the lens of the soul, if life is about evolution and soul learning and growth, every situation, no matter, no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging, no matter how heartbreaking, no matter how whatever, we really get it's about the learning. It's a classroom for our soul's evolution. Then we shift our focus to what is my soul seeking to learn here? Why did I attract this person? Why did I attract this situation? Why did I attract this accident? Why did I attract this illness? Why did I attract this you know, dynamic? And if the goal is learning and, 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 and the purpose is learning and growth, then we get to go through experiences 
And, and that's the freedom. You know, when, when, when your relationship with life itself transforms. Um, absolutely. It comes back to that whole uh, life happening to me versus for me, you know, and through me, uh, if you want to go further, which I think is really beautiful. But, um, you know, I, I, um, I love everything about that. And it's for me just been, it's just been a, a process. Challenging. It's been a process. Well, mm -hmm. Life, life, we just need to say, okay, life is, is a freaking trip. <laughs> it, this it life, is a trip. It is a trip. I, I mean, I'm, I, you're about to get me cursing and cussing and stuff. Come on, right? bring life, me on. <laughs> life, life is a motherfucker. Life is hard. Life <laughs> is challenging. Life, look, life ain't easy. And so, anyone listening to this conversation, you just need to know life is 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 intense. It's hard. It throws you a curveball sometimes. It beats you down sometimes. It just wait, and it just pummels you sometimes. And so. I want everyone to realize that life can be challenging and cut yourself some slack, you know, knowing that it takes a tremendous amount of courage to be human, to just wake up every day. Some of the shit that some of you may have gone through listening to this conversation in life, maybe you've been beating, maybe you've been abused, maybe you've been abandoned, maybe you've been neglected, maybe you've been hurt, maybe you've been heartbroken, maybe it means the list goes on. And you still wake up. Yeah. And you try. And yeah. yes, it's painful. But the fact that after some of the things that you've all been through, we've been through, I've been through, we wake up and we we try to do our best. We 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 it's like we reach for the light. It's like, you know, if you see on on a on the uh, concrete cement pavement, a little flower growing through the crack. Right. And then boom, someone steps on it. <laughs> it, it doesn't just die, right? It it it, it it, it still keeps trying to grow through the crack. And here we are as human beings, just growing through the crack, a little wonky, right? A little, <laughs> little off, but we're still reaching. So I think we have to give ourselves the grace and the compassion of realizing it's hard. I'm doing okay. I'm doing my best. And, and also extend that, that empathy and compassion to those around us, because we never know the stories, the battle, the private battle that another human being is facing and what they've been through and what it took for them to wake up in the morning, you know, and it's easy to judge, but I think when we can have that compassion for ourselves, then we can extend that to others and be a bit more kind. Oh, 100% agree with that. Um, we don't know what everyone's going through and, and, you know, my mother passing <clears throat> actually gave me a lot of that perspective too. You know, I, I, I would just look at somebody and they would cut me off in traffic or whatever. And I'm like, maybe their mom just died. Maybe. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And you end up that kind of brought tears to my eyes a little bit, but you end up just like developing, you just take one thing that you've been through and that you can feel compassion about. And uh, I've been teaching, my daughter just started driving too. And I've been teaching her that I'm like, you know what, maybe they just had this, you know, if she has one thing wrong, I'm like, maybe they just had that, you know, cut them some slack, even if they honk yeah. at you or they're mad, you know what, maybe, you know, uh, maybe they're just having a shit day and somebody just died from COVID or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and being kind, it's free. <laughs> Even better. Cost anything, you know, <laughs> yes. it, it really doesn't cost anything just to be, just to be a little, a little, a little you don't have to be like Mother Teresa, but you, just a little more kind. Yeah. You know? It's free. It's free. And it can make a huge difference in someone's day. You know, I, uh, it can make a huge difference. Huge yeah. Difference. Well, it's that leading by example that you were talking about, you know, I mean, it can have that ripple effect that yeah. is um, way beyond our scope of understanding. Yeah. You know, I, I try to focus on that too, because like you, you, you give, I feel like at the end of the, your book, you know, it's like this pep talk, like, it's like, you know, you don't know the ripple effect that you're having. If you come to serve, if you show up to serve, if you show up in your best self, if you come from kindness, if you just do these basic human things that for some reason we get all challenged and up in our head about. <sighs> Yeah. No, I started on a monologue, but <laughs> <laughs> um, this has uh, been really beautiful. I, I learned a lot from your book. I feel like I got so much out of it. There's so many things that I'm already working on practicing, but you had a really clear way of saying them and your examples were really beautiful. And I feel like it's just a great example in what you're putting out in the world. 
So um, I'm wishing you a lot of success on that. I'm really glad to be have read it and to be read, (laughs) but be putting it out, putting it out there. And like you said, everybody's already great, you know, like just find that, find that within yourself. And, um, as, as we, you know, kind of start to wrap up a little bit today, I'm just wondering what calls to your heart that you want to reiterate or share. Yeah. The the, the only thing that, that, that I would say just to wrap up in the final minute is, 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 is an urgent reminder to everyone listening. You are going to die. I want you to feel that. I want you to face that reality. You are going to die. That's not to, meant to be like some morbid you know, thing, but I think the more we can make death our friend, we waste so much time in jobs that we hate. We waste so much time in relationships that aren't right for us. We waste so much time in excuses and living in the future and living for the future and waiting for some special person, some special moment before we really live our lives. And so the fact is we're all going to die. Me, you, all the great ones we mentioned, Oprah, Bill Gates, you know, mother, Jesus died, Buddha died, you and I are going to die. And so the more we can face that and embrace that, really embrace it, feel it, embrace it, Take it in, bring death to tea, bring death to dinner and and feel it daily. Because when you really feel it, you realize how precious every second of this life is. You don't have another moment to waste. When my mother passed away, when when I spent the year with, I spent a year with my mother going back and forth during her chemo treatments. And I would sit with her doing nothing. I'd sit with her watching her make tea. I would sit with her just talking about nothing really. And the only regret I have in my life, only regret to this day, is why did I wait until she was dying to spend the time? Because I didn't think it was important because I was so busy doing some other stuff, you know, and and every moment is sacred, you know, and when we really remember death, you remember every, like the people in 9-11 had no idea that they weren't coming home that night to look their loved ones in the eyes once more and say, hey, I'm sorry. And so if death came right now, would you be ready? And if not, why not? What's unsaid? What's ungiven? What's unexpressed? What's unforgiven? We don't have another day to wait. We think we do, and I hope we do, but it's not a right. It's not a guarantee. If it happens, it's a privilege. And so, and we know this. Yeah, we know people die, but only when people die, then we go, shit, this thing is real. This is real. This is real. And so don't waste time, folks. Make amends. Let go of grudges. Love fully. That's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day. Yeah. We hear about so many people that have the near-death experiences and then they go on to do all these things and embrace their lives. And yet for some reason it takes it, it I don't know what it takes for it to sink in with us. Yeah. It's time. Hopefully yeah. Hopefully this conversation will help. I hope so. How could it not? It's gonna have a ripple effect. Absolutely. It's helping right now, just putting it out in the world. I feel it. And I want to say a huge thank you. And everyone can find you at kootblackson.com, K-U-T-E-B-L-A-C-K-S-O-N.com. Or your Instagram handle is the same, right? Coot Blackson. Same, same, That's right. Same. You're very Instagram easy to find. Instagram and Facebook. That's right. That's where you're at. And uh, I would encourage everyone to pick up or listen to The Magic of Surrender because I love your accent too. So it was great listening to you for six hours of the book. So um, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, I'm just, I just want to say a huge thank you for being here and sharing your light and your message. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Yay. 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 I love that conversation so much. Remember that you can find Coot at CootBlackson.com or at Coot Blackson on Facebook or Instagram. And his book, The Magic of Surrender is out now, which I very much enjoyed. So you can go find that wherever you get your books. And big thanks to him. I loved one of the overarching themes in the book that we talked about today too. And that was that surrender is not about being lazy. There is a responsibility and action factor to it. And this thing about scheduling and showing up in your life and being able to say no, because you're honoring that, which you're in alignment with. How cool is that? I think that's just a really beautiful takeaway that, that speaks to a lot of what we do on this show 
right? We talk a lot about habits. We talk a lot about um, practices and efficiency. And those things do free you up. It reminded me of one of my favorite quotes from Charlie Parker, which is like, you know, you, you learn the scales, you practice and practice, and then you forget all that shit and just play. It's about freedom within the structure, right? You already know all your scales. You already, you know, you can play the scales on the guitar. And then that is within that structure is what frees you to play this ripping fucking guitar solo. (laughs) So anyway, that is really interesting and cool. And just another one of those paradoxes, like I've been talking about extensively in the last, I don't know how many episodes those paradoxes in life, right? Within the structure is their freedom, right? Within the nose is the yeses. <laughs> they can go on and on. Anyway, I love you so much. I'm so happy you're here. Share it with a friend. If you thought of somebody, surrender to that. And that's what he would say in his book. Like when you just think of somebody, they, that might be a little nudge from the universe that, hey, this person could use something in there. Share it. And it means the world to me. Or if you feel called, if something spoke to you, if you could leave a rating and review, just a little blurb, that's, that's ripple effect. Good stuff for sure. And sign up for the newsletter too, amyedwards.com. If you want to reach out to me, awesome. Please do. You can find me at amy at amyedwards.com. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any and everything. Or if you just have an issue or a question for me, shoot it to me. I would love to know. I would love to answer it. Um, All right. I guess that's about wrapped up. Subscribe to the newsletter. I think I mentioned that. Rate, review, the business stuff. Big thanks to Hot Pie. Big thanks to G today. Thank you so much for sitting in and taking care of me in the Zoom call today. And Coot. And um, yeah, big thanks to Coot again. Thanks to our team here at Hot Pie. And thanks to you for being here, for listening, for doing this for yourself too. Because we're listening to the good stuff. You know, we're putting it in our head in our minds it's rattling around in there and that that matters it's the good shit i love you so much and i'm wishing you just peace and love and health and wealth and light and abundance and joy and letting go and surrender and magical fucking blessings till we meet again till next time thank you so much for listening if you liked this show please rate and review it totally matters. And I encourage you to spread the love too and share this episode with a friend if you feel called. Find me and my newsletter sign up at amyedwards.com. And you can also connect with me on Instagram at Real Amy Edwards or in Clubhouse at Amy Edwards or write to me. It's amy at amyedwards.com.